so I'm Allison Ferrari. I'm the volunteer manager at Lighthouse for the Blind. Uh, I've been here, it'll be five years in October. And uh, so we're just gonna go over a little bit about blindness in the community and then also what Lighthouse does. So that's just kind of a run of show. And I'll be doing most of the talking. Uh, and then my colleague, Sherry, will also be stepping in at times when she would like to. Um, Sherry, do you wanna briefly introduce yourself? Sure, hi everybody. This is Sherry Albers, Community Outreach Coordinator for Lighthouse for the Blind. Um, Maybe some of you have um, seen me at the Lighthouse Connection with Ashby Village um, sessions that we've been doing monthly um, for the past four months, and we still have four months to go, um, which you are all invited to attend. Um, we do a different topic um, each month, so you can um, look at the newsletters that Ashby Village puts out um, for that, and i um, very happy to be here. and. Um, this is a great presentation um, that Allison has put together. Thank you. Yeah, um, and then just some housekeeping things, as Jessica said. Um, so feel free to kind of interrupt at any time. If you have a question, you're welcome to unmute yourself and just say your name, uh, and then I'll kind of call on you. Um, and then you can ask your question, or you can put it in the chat, and Jessica will help field those for me, or at least pitch it to me. Um, and then, you know, we're all adults, take care of your needs as you need to. So we'll try to wrap around six or so. Um, I think I've got the timing right. We'll see. Okay. Uh, first off, can everyone see the, the PowerPoint slide that says Lighthouse for the Blind and working with the community? Several nods. Great. Thank you for those with your cameras on as well for the response. It's really hard to present to an empty room. And if you want to keep your camera off, that's also fine. This is a no judgment zone. Okay. Um, so I wanted to start with the legal definition of blindness, just so that we're kind of all on the same page. Uh, there's no quiz or anything, so don't feel like, you know, you have to quickly jot this down or, you know, remember what the percentages are or whatever. Um, but basically, the legal definition of blindness is in your best eye vision is 2200 or less with the best possible correction and or a visual field of 20 degrees or less. Uh, so this is both the distance that you can see and then also your peripheral vision. Uh, there's a lot of blind, uh, conditions around that will cause visual impairment that will affect your vision in varying degrees. Um, I hear a lot of people say things like, oh, without my glasses, I'm visually impaired, but the fact that your glasses correct your vision mean that you're actually not. Uh, so I'm somebody who identifies as sighted, and also, I should not be driving without my glasses because they very much correct my vision and I cannot see big signage without my glasses, but I'm not visually impaired because my glasses correct it. Um, funny, just kind of anecdote, uh, a friend of mine uses a guide dog. She went to the DMV to surrender her driver's license, went to the DMV with her do guide dog and is like, hey, I'm blind. I need to surrender my license. And they're like, oh, no, you can see. You're fine. She's like, no, here's my guide dog. I <laughs> I mean, like, I'm blind. And they're like, no, 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 you can see here, do a vision test. So she has RP, which means that she can see almost 2020 in this really narrow straw of a window. Everything else is just kind of blurry or black or whatever, and she can't see. But so she could pass a vision test at the DMV because she just went letter by letter. And they were like, great, you passed your driver's license test. And she's like, great, okay. So she has a valid driver's license. She is blind, she has a guide dog. And then it got renewed because her record was so great. Um, so just just my my thing saying that blindness kind of impacts everybody differently. And that's, that's just the legal definition. Um, okay, so as I mentioned, I'm sighted. Y'all probably don't wanna hear from me the entire time. Um, so there's two videos that I'm gonna share. Uh, there's the first one that we're going to see. They're both about five minutes long. Uh, this one is blind people described you wish you could see. And actually, I'm going to stop sharing for one minute because I'm pretty sure I did not share the sound. Um, I did not share the sound, which makes this video almost useless. Okay, can you still see the, um, oh, hang on, I'm so sorry. Um, Jessica, I know I said that I didn't need the um, the tech check, so this is on me, not on Jessica, I promise. Okay, can I get a thumbs up if you can see the video again? Okay, great, thanks. So we'll give this a go. 
One time someone asked me if like I wished I could see my mother's face or something stupid. And I was like, no, you know, she's my mom. Like I know my mom. I don't need to see her face to know her. This is a question I'm sure you've heard before. But, uh, <laughs> do you wish you could see? Um that answer has completely changed over time. I'm very comfortable with my blindness. I've lived with it for the past nine years now, and I'm very uh, high functional. Um, but yes, I wish I could see. I sometimes wish I could see, but I don't think it's for the reasons that everyone thinks. When I was little, I used to say, oh yeah, it'd be cool if I could see. I used to say that I had a favorite color. I used to say I liked, oh, I like the color blue, just because of the way the word blue sounded. Then I went to the, the phase where I was like, nope, I wouldn't change the way I was ever. I've never had usable vision at all. So being blind is part of my identity. If I woke up tomorrow and I could see, I think that over time I might lose a bit of my identity. And depending on the effort I made, maybe my community. I imagine some of my blind friends would be a little bit like, what the fuck, like that's not really fair. And so yeah, I think I would lose a bit of my identity and that's kind of sad, so it'd be hard. I'm a a single father of five, um, beautiful children, um, and I wish I could see their faces, their smiles, their um, tears, you know, just the facial expressions. As time has progressed and I've been with you know, the girl of my dreams, I was like, well, I, I wish I could see what she looked like. I wish I could see her, but then I've never seen anything, so I, maybe I'm just happy to be attracted to her the way I am. It would help me understand a little more of what's going on when it comes to my kids. I try to f feel their faces just to see uh, changes um, in their growth um, and try to paint a picture that way, you know, with what I remember. One thing I will be sad to not be able to see is like, if I have a, you know, a daughter, she grows up and she gets married, you know, there's that whole thing of seeing, you know, the dad seeing her walk down the aisle in her beautiful dress. And that is something I will be, it, it's a shame to not see. I don't wish I could see to see, like, I don't know, my future children or whatever. Sometimes I wish I could see because being blind is just a pain in the ass. If I'm looking maybe for a business on a street, like GPS uh, might be able to get me close, but finding maybe the exact business would be really convenient. I had an enlightening event a few weeks ago. So we had the solar eclipse. I actually was just gonna lie in bed and listen to the birds go crazy and the dogs go crazy. But my wife was like, no, you, you, you should come outside and, and feel the sun, like feel the way it feels, because it's weird. So I go outside and she's thinking, oh, you don't need the sunglasses. Well, the thing is, I do have a light sensitivity. So my head started spinning after being out there for about 30 seconds and I realized I was gonna pass out and I ran inside, I ran upstairs and laid down on the bed. And at some point I put my hand up to like, I don't know, itch my head or, I don't know, my, I had a headache. And I was more aware of my hand in that moment for some reason, and I don't know why. And it was as if I saw it. Even though I know I didn't, it felt like I did. So, ever since then, the do you wish you could see question has been a little bit more tricky to answer, because maybe I would want to. How difficult would that be to transition into that? What would you have to relearn? I don't know. I mean, everything, right? Because the way I interpret the world is very different. Like, I mean, I don't know concepts. Like, you know, I can associate like green grass, blue sky, but like, I don't really know what that means. I used to be able to see colors, and I know that if I could see them again, I'd be able to differentiate like blue and green and red and stuff, but I wonder if I would be like, oh, that's what somebody meant by royal blue? Okay, that's not what I was imagining. I don't understand depth perception from a visual standpoint. I would be relearning literally things that children already know. When I experience the environment, it's through sound, it's through touch, it's through interaction. There's a lot of things that, you know, like eye contact and things like that that I just don't really, you know, it's not, it's not something I really understand. I am very, very fascinated that people can look at a page of text all over the page and somehow focus on like one line at a time. Like that to me sounds fascinating. I mean, if I just focused in on it and gave up everything I had and just tried to relearn the world, maybe, but I'm not sure if perfect vision would would be a 
benefit to me, as cool as it seems. It might be such a shock that I might a lot of times keep my eyes closed and go back to what I know. Okay, so that's that video. Um, usually this is when I ask folks what their reactions are. Um, does anyone want to pop in any surprises, thoughts, questions into the chat? Um, and I can read them out loud. It's okay if you don't want to share, but <clears throat> want to give the opportunity. And if you have a question, feel free to just unmute yourself and ask it if you'd like. I see typing, so we'll we'll give you all a minute. I wish Zoom chat had like a thing like iMessage does or Facebook Messenger where you can see when people are typing. Mostly it's just I think I see people typing. Okay, we'll let those trickle in. Um, there's, there's a question that was um, sent directly to me. Oh, sure. What's the question? Um, it uh, says, seems like being high functioning or not would change the responses here. Uh, brother oh, lost sight at age 70. Blindness is super hard for him. Interesting question. Yeah. Um, I mean, so my my thoughts on I think it just totally depends on each person individually um so it could totally depend on when you when you lose your vision it could depend on how much residual vision you have left um everybody's journey is a little bit different um lighthouse we tend not to focus too much on like high functioning or not um or like high partial uh just because we want to make sure that we're celebrating on visual techniques and everybody's kind of in the community which we'll talk about in a bit um but that's just kind of my sense again just everybody's a little bit different um sherry do you want to step in do you have any particular thoughts or differing opinions from mine um it's a tough one for me to comment on um because it is it's a really, really personal question. Um, and so I, I just uh, want to appreciate everybody's opinion. And um, I, I tend to not really try to figure out that answers. So I'm, I, I'm gonna pass. No, that's a good non-answer answer. I like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, just, you know, every, like, like we both said, everybody's a little bit different um, mm -hmm. and Lighthouse exists to try to connect people and help make that journey a little bit easy. And sometimes it's just, it's never going to be easy. As the person said, like sometimes being blind is just a pain in the ass, you know, like uh, that's yeah. just a part of it too. Um, and also society kind of sucks. So um, everybody's just going to have different experiences um and and another thing allison I'll, i'm mm -hmm. sorry i'll just interject that um will lighthouse their goal one of their goals is to meet people where they are in their journey and their um acceptance of their blindness or low vision whatever they they tend they want to call where they're at and um yeah and um and you know the one girl wants to call it, you know, a pain in the ass and other people will just call it a nuisance um, and, and that degree on the spectrum. So, um, yes, so that's what it would also I would say. Yeah, hopefully that was an appropriate non answer answer for whoever asked that. Um, and then there was another question in the chat um, about light sensitivity. Um, so some mm. person has light sensitivity. Does that mean he has such poor eyesight that he can only detect variable amounts of light? Uh, so light sensitivity has to do with like how bright things are. Um, so if somebody has light sensitivity, it could be that uh, you know, maybe they have a lot of sight, but then like at high, like noon to three, when the sun is really intense in the sky, they're almost totally blind because the light is too intense or the light causes additional things like migraines or something, but it has to do with the amount of light that's in a room. Um, and this is where, I mean, disability in general has a lot of like almost competing accommodations and, and competing things. Blindness is one of one of this within the community um, where some people might need a lot of light and some people might have 
a harder time with more light. So like, you know, a lighthouse, we're constantly trying to balance. Sherry the other day turned on the light and I was like, it's too bright. So we had to have a conversation <laughs> about like, okay, Sherry needs this amount of light. What, what amount is okay for Allison not to get a migraine, you know? So um, it's constant navigation. So long answer, light sensitivity has to do with how much light is out there in the world, less about how much a person can detect. That's a good question. Uh, all right, let's see. Will this advance? Okay, so um, just a couple like bullets. There's a lot about blindness. So by no means is this meant to be like your one-stop Bible about blindness. Uh, it's just kind of an introduction, get those gears thinking. Um, and then later uh, I'll be sharing with Jessica who can forward to you or um, she can give me a roster and I can forward it out however she wants to do it. Um, but some more resources as well. So just know that like, you know, Sherry and I were on a soapbox at the moment, but we do not have all the answers. Um, so anyway, uh, so a couple bullets. So what's the difference between blind, low vision and visually impaired? Uh, so the way that I kind of couch it is that Lighthouse is Lighthouse for the Blind and Visually Impaired. We have existed since 1902. We've had that name since I think 1902. Um, and so the community itself is the blind and visually impaired community or the blind and low vision community, it kind of, it will change depending on who you talk to. Honestly, Lighthouse is not consistent about if we say blind and visually impaired or blind and low vision. Generally, we have both. Uh, the reason being that technically, like if you're going to get into nitty gritty, if you talk to an optometrist, there is a difference, like a hierarchical vision assessment um, of like, if you have 2200 to whatever your low vision, and then this is when you're, yeah, there's like a whole thing. We don't really care as much about that. Um, basically people, as we mentioned, are in different places in their journey. And so blind can encompass the entire spectrum of folks who are visually impaired slash legally blind. If they've been diagnosed, they count themselves as blind and it can be everyone from who's totally blind to people who have a lot of vision, um, but are still legally blind. And then also people don't like the term blind. So they might want low vision. They might want visually impaired. Uh, it just really depends on the person. Um, blind in general is a, can be a really loaded term. Um, it has a lot of negative connotation that we've kind of put into it. So not everybody likes it. Uh, so that's why we do blind and so blind and low vision, blind and visually impaired. Um, like all minority groups, each person is really different about what label they want to call themselves. So this is when we try to have an overarching one that we stick to and then know that somebody's going to fit in maybe, but they also might be somewhere else. Um, I will also say try to stick to these three words. I've heard things like heart of sight and <laughs> Um, I don't know, has trouble seeing, like those kind of euphemisms can be really harmful. Um, so just try to stick to blind, low vision, visually impaired, um, and you're generally okay. Um, and if you call someone by the wrong thing, because you didn't know or whatever, just say, I'm so sorry. How do you prefer to be called or labeled? Um, or one of the really icky ones is sight challenged. Oh yeah, sight challenged. Don't do that. Really icky. Yeah, and while we're on the topic, um, corrected somebody today, don't say handicap, don't say differently abled, don't say special needs. There's a whole lot of don'ts. Mm -hmm. Disability is, is a really strong, powerful word. Don't be afraid to use it. Um, same with blindness, low vision, visually impaired. Mm -hmm. Those are all safe words. Um, mm -hmm. If you ever have questions about language, feel free to ask Sherry and myself. Mm -hmm. I love talking about language. So um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get off this because I will be talking about it for at least 15 more minutes if mm -hmm. I don't. Um, although the next one has to do with language. Um, okay, uh, think about if you're talking to a blind person. So Sherry, what do you, um, actually, I don't think I've ever asked you. Blind, visually impaired, low vision, what's your preferred label? I'm blind. Blind, great. So uh -huh. as, a, as a blind person, Sherry, um, if I was talking to Sherry, can I ask her, have you seen the latest movie on Netflix? So there's a new Ryan Gosling movie. Have you seen the latest Ryan Gosling movie? Can I get... Thumbs up if you think yes, uh, like flat hand if you have no idea, and thumbs down if it's a no. So can I ask Sherry, have you seen Ryan Gosling? Yes? Uh, I don't really know. Thumbs down. Oh, all over the place. Okay. Couple of thumbs up, some no's, and a couple, or a couple no's, and then like maybe one or two. I don't know. 
Um, what do you think, Sherry? Do you want to answer it? Please ask me if I've seen Brian Gosling movie. Please. Brian, Brian Gosling. Who's Brian Gosling? Oh, Ryan. See, yeah. I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Besides Ryan, I saw Brian. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. He's he's that twin that just came out, you know, from oh, gotta check way back when. Out. Yeah, they yeah. just discovered him. Um, I would like to be treated as normal as possible. Okay. And and not like sound if you were to ask me, did you hear that Ryan Gosling movie last night? I'm like, what are you talking about? No, but I saw it. Um, yeah that that's that's what I would prefer yeah yeah our mm -hmm. um CEO uses the phrase tortured language <laughs> which I really like which is trying to pigeonhole English to fit specifically a person's access needs so it would be like yeah Sherry have you heard the new Ryan Gosling movie the other one that's like maybe you could ask is have you consumed it which is just like kind of <laughs> weird there's no other good like synonym really um so don't beat yourself up use normal language it's yeah. totally fine it's okay to ask a deaf person if they've heard this thing it's okay to ask a mm -hmm. person in a wheelchair a chair user never wheelchair bound a chair user uh if they're walking to whatever um but with blind people have you seen that movie did you watch that hockey game last night yeah did you read that book um mm -hmm. on the subject audiobooks is reading mm -hmm. i will that is event um are you looking for something anyway all of that is totally fine um there's no real other way to to ask it and you'll spend 15 20 minutes with like a computer pinwheel just like loading and loading and loading trying to think of <laughs> alternative language yes um, so it's totally fine uh and like we said before this is not a one size fits all it's a one size fits most so you will be talking to people and you'll say hey sherry have you seen that movie and then they're like well i'm blind i can't see it um and then you say i'm so sorry how did you yeah. Did you consume it? Did you listen to it? Try to there, find some. There there's not going to be a, those people. There's yeah. going to be those people, particularly mm -hmm. folks who have been sighted their whole lives and then recently lost their vision. So you will encounter them. It's okay. Um, you know, you're not going to be able to know how everybody interacts with the world. Um, but I would say just don't beat yourself up about it. Use normal language and they will tell you if they don't like it. And you can talk to them. You can have like a philosophical conversation about what they prefer. Um, they are the experts in their own experience, right? So um, one size fits most on this one. But and then uh, why do some people use a white cane and others use a guide dog? Uh, so there are two mobility devices out there. There's a, a white cane or just a cane, never a stick, uh, never a pole or anything like that. And then there's a guide dog. Um, so they're both mobility devices. One is a living, living, breathing creature. And then the other one is you get to stow it against a wall. So there are pluses and minuses to both. Um, it just comes down to a matter of personal preference. There's a lot of training that goes on to get both. I tried to find like a number for you all of like how many hours, and it just really depends on the person. Um, it's hours and hours and hours and hours. You basically have a master's degree of like getting around the world with a cane or a dog. Um, but the benefits of a cane, you get to walk around, you get to stash it on the floor, you get to put it against the wall, you don't have to think about it. Um, it's still a term of it's still an empowering tool. Um, and a guide dog, you get to some people like it because you can maybe room around a little bit easier. You're not going to like whack people in the shins with your canes. Um, sometimes it can be easier to navigate crowded spaces. You also have like a built in companion. Um, guide dogs also are dogs, they need to go to the vet, they poop, you need to feed it, you know all of that stuff, they're hairy, so much hair. Um, and then there's also a lot of discrimination happening with guide dogs too, with things like ride share and things. So there's just like a lot of things going on with both of them. Um, so it's just a matter of personal preference. Um, and there's all kinds of canes, there's all kinds of dogs. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I will say like one, just like guiding principle around guide dogs is if they are in harness, they are working. Uh, this goes for any service animal. Um, if they are in harness, they are working. Don't wave to it. Don't talk to the dog. Don't pet it. Uh, just basically pretend that that creature does not exist. Um, if you know the person or you see them on the street, you can say, hey, may I pet your dog? You can talk to the human as if they're a human. 
um, and they might say no, and that's okay. Um, the reason being you don't want to wave or do anything is that you're distracting the dog and potentially putting its handle handler in life saving or life threatening situation. So mm -hmm. for a guide dog, it could be that it's distracted and no longer knows how to cross the street. It could be a dog who also detects seizures and now is paying attention to you as opposed to this person who might seize at any minute. Um, so working dogs do exist for a reason. So just be courteous and talk to humans as if they're humans. Um, the humans shouldn't bite. I don't, I don't think they will. Um, and then the last thing is human guiding. Um, so you might hear this also as sighted guide. At Lighthouse, we use more human, we use the term human guide instead of sighted guide because blind people can also be a guide. Uh, so human guide is things that you've probably seen before. It's a person leading um, and they'll take their right elbow and then the blind person will grab their right elbow with their left hand and then you'll just walk together. Um, so if you're talking to somebody uh, and they're blind, you can say, hey, would you like an elbow? Hey, would you like a guide? And they say, yes. You say, great, I'm holding out my right arm. Um, usually I kind of just like lightly brush my right elbow against their arm. You can also um, touch the back of your right hand to the back of their left hand, and then they'll follow up your arm um, to, to your elbow. And then you just walk like normal. You don't need to do like big, like huff, chicken arm. foam. Yeah, chicken arms. Mm -mm. Um, just like walk like normal, talk Relax. to them. Um, the, you can announce stairs and curbs. Um, but usually what I do is ask people, hey, would you like me to tell you if there's a curb? Would you like me to tell you if there's like the sidewalk is uneven? It kind of depends on the person. Um, usually if I can sense that they're a little bit less stable mobility wise, um, then I will probably just announce everything in general. Um, but you can kind of get a sense of that. Um, but just again, talk to the person. I will say, even if they say, no, I don't really need that. Don't be a jerk. If there's like a low hanging branch, let them know there's a low hanging branch. Don't let them whack it in the face. Um, and then the other thing is that if you're going through a narrow space, you just put your hand behind your back and then they'll follow you behind. Um, all of this, there's like videos you can watch online, but really just talk to a blind person. Other than Sherry, most of them are nice. Um, yeah, just right. kidding, Sherry. It's okay. Uh, um, yeah. I do want to add one mm -hmm. thing that, um, so if they're um, a guide dog user, they'll be, so they will switch to your left side because the dog is always on their left side. So they will take your left arm and have the dog harness in their left hand. So they'll take your, their, your left arm with their right hand and the dog with their left. So they'll just be on the other side of you. Um, and also they, you know, m most people, you know, should be responsible for themselves, even when in um, a human guide mode like whenever I'm with a human guide I'm still using my cane on my right side to find obstacles um, because I don't want to give someone that total responsibility for me because um, god forbid like I do um, step off a curb and and you know trip or something I, that's just a very big deal responsibility to give someone so I'm, I'm still avidly using my cane um, and, and holding on to someone with my left. So, um, that is just me, but not everybody is the same. So, um, just judge you, just, you be the judge, uh, you know, when, when you're guiding someone, um, and just see how much they are relying upon you. So when Allison said, you know, if there is a flight of stairs coming, I think error on error on the side of, um, uh, making sure they know it is coming or, or something like that. Yeah, perfect. And then we have mm -hmm. a question in the chat. Do you wanna handle even left-handed people with what side they use the cane or what side they may take someone's arm? Yeah, you'll be able to tell. And, and the best thing to do is when, they, when they, you come up to them say, which side would you like to, um, to be on? Of, you know, which side would you like me to guide you from? And then just have that conversation. Yeah. Also, Alan, touche. I've been doing this for like five years and no one's ever asked me that question. So props. I love new questions. 
All they just right. had a thing on the other day. It was left-handed person's day. Oh yeah. And then they posted saw about it. like Obama and the US women. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I saw it on the CBS morning news and they actually uh, showed that lefties store down on Embarcadero. I mean, at the wharf. The anyway, wharf, I yeah. digress. Yes. Cool. Happy belated Southpaw day. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to move on to some myths. Um, so blindness myth number one, if someone says I'm blind, that means they are totally blind. Uh, so as I mentioned before, uh, this is a fallacy. So blindness is an identity and there is a spectrum of visual acuities. Uh, the estimate is only about 15% of blind people are totally or near totally blind. Um, also, vision might change over time. Somebody might, um, you know, have one vision at 18 and identify as visually impaired and have a lot of visual acuity and it might devolve moving forward, things just might change. Um, so it's not it's not a stagnant thing, um, but just overarching, if someone says they're blind, it doesn't mean they only see black or they only see like haze. Um, it's it's a whole, whole array of things out there. Um, blindness myth number two, all blind people read Braille. Incorrect. Uh, the statistic is only about one in 10 blind people can read Braille. Um, there's a lot of reasons behind that. It could be the fact that a lot of um, the leading causes of blindness happen when you're older. Diabetic retinopathy and macular degeneration are the two leading causes of blindness and they impact people mostly when they're older. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, right? So says the saying. Um, that doesn't mean you know, people 50 plus or whatever don't learn Braille. It's just harder. Um, there's also a lot of technology out there now where it's like, why learn Braille when I've got my like handy iPhone telling me what I need to do. Um, and then also some of it is just the school system, um, kind of the thing where um, we know now that if a person is blind, they can have all visual acuity. School systems still to this day, if you have just a little bit of sight, they'll be like, cool, you don't need to learn Braille because you can see things, even though I need to like hold this like to my face in order to be able to see. Yep. Yep. Um, there's a lot of people who have a lot of residual vision and still like Braille. So long diatribe, not every blind person reads Braille. It is still very a very, very useful tool um, and it's fun. Braille is a um, codified system that is a tactile representation of a language. Uh, you can apply the Braille system to any language. So we use unified English Braille, um, but there's, I almost said there's British Braille. That is not a separate language, Allison. Um, there's English Braille, there's Arabic Braille, Chinese, you name it, there's a Braille system. Um, United, unified English Braille has contractions. Um, Braille takes up a lot of space. Uh, so that's the first kind of image on the screen is showing the contractions for women. Um, an example, just to like put this into sighted people terms, is uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. If you've seen it, it's like, you know, a 350 page chapter book or whatever. Um, it's small, if it's on your shelf or your backpack or whatever. In Braille, it is four volumes um, and it's, they're stacked big, they're computer sheets, size sheets. So um, Braille just takes up a lot of space. So use contractions. There's also different systems, like I said. Um, so on the screen, you can see a musical scale uh, translated from the graph to Braille. And then there's also a math, Sigma math equation that I knew back in high school. And I have no idea what it means at this point in my life, um, but there is a math equation. Um, so that's Nimitz Braille, um, if there's any math folks out there. And then blindness myth number three, if you're blind, you automatically get a white cane or a guide dog. Um, so there's a thought that like, okay, I go into the doctor and they're like, hey, Allison, I'm so sorry. You can't see anymore. You have like whatever condition. Here's your white cane. Bye. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, as I mentioned, it takes a lot of training to learn how to use a cane and a guide dog. So in theory, our ophthalmologist and ophthalmologist friends are going to refer people to organizations like Lighthouse to get the 30, 100, 150 hour trainings that people need in order to be able to safely cross the street, to be able to navigate around their home, to be able to um, do all of the things that... Um, just takes a little bit of a shift in thinking and interpreting the world. Um, but just because you've been diagnosed with a visual impairment does not mean that you automatically get a cane or a dog. Um, 
Yeah, I really like this picture. This is a guide dog for the blind picture when they used to train shepherds. Um, and they're in front of a cable car back in like the 50s. And then the last myth is a blind person has a heightened sense of sound. Um, so I have Daredevil on here. I don't know if anyone's familiar, but Daredevil is a blind superhero. Um, and he basically has a heightened sense of sound because he's blind. Um, so uh, disabled people with sense disabilities, namely blind and deaf, uh, do not have any superhuman strength. Like as a blind person, Sherry doesn't have any superhuman hearing ability. Um, the only difference is they maybe have a lot more training to kind of think about the world differently and to interpret the world through sounds. Like uh, when a sighted person is crossing the street, you're going to be looking both ways. You're going to be assessing things visually. A blind person is going to be using their non-visual tools to cross the street, which is listening for traffic <clears throat> patterns. If it's stopped, that means that it might be safe to go. Also, where's the parallel traffic? There's a lot of things that they're just reinterpreting visual information or they're reinterpreting sound to kind of shape the world, but there's no like superhuman-ness going on um, I get asked that question all the time you know I'm like no I didn't turn into Lindsay Wagner six million dollar woman or whatever um but yeah but I do have one more myth if you want to know sure yeah um all blind people wear dark glasses oh that's a good one yeah because we don't um, a lot of people, you know, some people do. Um, and I think a lot of celebrity like Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles and mm, those are the Ronnie two. Millsap. I'm sorry, who? Oh, I said those are the two that I know. Yeah. Of. That's like part um, of their brand. Yeah, I know. I know. It's cool, mm. blah, blah, blah. But, um, and I have some friends that do, but most of them don't. But I think, you know, when like people say to me all the time, you don't look blind. And I'm like, oh, why? Because, you know, I'm looking, you can see my eyes and they kind of are looking in your direction. But yeah, so the the thing about, you know, wear dark sunglasses or dark glasses. Yeah, so. Yeah, and I think similarly, you can't, out, like if you look at somebody's eyeball, you're not necessarily going to like be able to tell like oh that person's blind there are conditions where it's like yeah you'll see like a milky eye or something that doesn't look mm -hmm. quite right or whatever but by and large most people have like normal looking eyeballs um okay mindful of the time oh i guess the powerpoint's like we're done we're not done um Okay, so I have one more video I want to share. My yeah. our original thought was to talk about Lighthouse, but that was kind of a lesser, um, a lesser thing because you can find out about that by asking Sherry or myself and poking around our website. So I really wanted to just get into the nitty gritty of blindness. So we'll do one more video, um, and then finish the kind of blindness questions or blindness section, and then we'll we'll do it to questions. So we will still be right on time. Okay. One more video here. Uh, this is uh, Conchita Hernandez, um, and the title is Coming Out as Blind. When I was in college, actually, um, there was this guy that was like, you are so high. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, you're always squinting. You know, you're like sensitive to light. And like, whenever we say hi, you're like zoned out. You're like so high. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not high. I just can't see and I just didn't tell you. I have a brother who's also legally blind. So when he was young, he would trip a lot and fall. And my mom um, was like a little worried. So they took him to the doctor and they're like, yeah, your child's legally blind. So then when I was born, my mom was like, knew right away that like something's wrong. Legally blind means you see less than 10% of what a person with 20-20 vision. Only 10% are totally blind. The other 90% are like myself where we have some vision. I mean, it varies. It's like the brighter it is, the less I can see. I'm colorblind. I don't see faces. Like I see silhouettes. I fell behind in school because I couldn't see what I was doing. My teachers knew I couldn't see, but I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, I'm fine, I'm fine. But like I was never taught braille. So I wasn't able to like fluently read text. Never in my life up until I got blindness training did I go anywhere by myself. When I was in college, I traveled abroad to Europe. I went with a friend who was a roommate. I always felt this anxiety that I always had to be with this person that I went with because if I didn't or like if I disagreed with something they said, I would be stuck and like have 
no way to like find my way around. So I think up until like I got training, I was very dependent on other people. So I was always like, well, maybe I shouldn't speak my mind on something because then I'll be without a ride. <laughs> I did date, but I didn't tell them until after the fact. In my mind, I was like, oh my gosh, like, what are they going to think? I was able to sustain a relationship, but I do feel like I was a passive participant. Like, I didn't make as many active decisions as I could have or thought because I was like, well, he has a car and he can take me places. And so it's back to this, like, I'm relying on people. So I had a blind professor my senior year and I took this class on, like, politics. And, he, and I told him like, hey, I can't really see, so I need you to like verbalize what you're saying, what you're writing on the board. And he's blind and he looks at me and he's like, so you're blind? And I'm like, oh no, 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 let's not get confused, no. So he was like, you should go to this conference. It's really amazing. Like you're gonna meet other blind people. And I'm like, that's not really my thing. I don't really wanna associate with other blind people because I'm not really like them. And he like calls up the organization and is like, I have this young lady here and you are all gonna pay her way. So I show up to this conference and there's people that are like totally blind, um, doing like way more than I do independently. And I was like, wait a minute, like you came here by yourself on the plane? Like, how did you do that? Like how, you have a two year old? Like, how are you doing this? I don't understand. The stereotype that I had about what a person that's blind is like is totally false. And they kind of were like, okay, you're gonna cook independently, put in a light bulb, change a tire, sewing, braille. How do you cross the street as a blind person? They teach you to use a cane. We had a lot of um, like philosophy discussions about like, what does it mean to be blind? And why are, are we hiding our cane in our closet instead of like taking it out in public? I used to think like, I have to, you know, define everything around kind of what I can't do. That's not the case at all, that I can do all these things. And I may not have the answer to how I can do it, but I'll figure it out because there's tons of blind people that I know and somebody has done it. The first time I actually used a cane, I was like crying because I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, and I was actually at a bus stop and I start talking to like some guy that was at the bus stop and he starts hitting on me and I was like, did he not see my cane? Like. I don't understand how he's hitting on me. My parents ended up kind of moving the whole family to the United States because me and my brother have a disability. I mean, it's a huge sacrifice that they left behind, like their family, everything that they knew um, to move to somewhere that they didn't know the language, they didn't know the culture, they didn't know anybody. Um, but they knew that being here was going to make a difference in our lives because we would have opportunities that we would not elsewhere. So I think I get my strength from my parents and seeing the sacrifices that they made so that we had the opportunities that we have. I think a lot about like intersections of different things and like with race, it's something that is difficult to navigate, but you have your family who kind of has the same experience so they can kind of guide you in kind of like, oh, well, this is what I went through. This is, and so I, I didn't have that. It was just kind of me and my brother. That's why I think it's really important to kind of come out. And in the way that we talk about kind of like the LGBT community coming out and being proud of who they are to like help others, it's very, very similar. Um, so like, I think that when I came out as um, having a disability and being really proud, other people who have disabilities are like, oh, it can be a positive thing. Um, and I can be empowered through it. I have tons of sisters, so it was like, okay, you pick out what I'm gonna wear. And I was always like, yeah, I'm cool with whatever. I learned to kind of be like, okay, I do know what I like. And even though I can't see color or I can't necessarily see like the exact feature of the dress, like I can get it described to me so that I'm actively choosing what I wear and how I express myself. I dance salsa and I was like, there has to be a way to teach blind people. So Braille has like a very simple, like six stop pattern. And so I incorporated that with the feet. And so now I teach blind people how to dance salsa with like this technique I came up with. My name is Conchita and I want to dispel the myth that blind is not beautiful. Okay, that's that video. Um, <laughs> okay, same thing. If anyone wants to put their thoughts in the chat. Um, I've now watched this video enough where I don't cry every time, but it's still, <laughs> ugh, it's such a good, Thing. Conchita, um, she's local, right, Sherry? Ish? Or is she not I anymore? I thought she was Texas, but I'm not sure. Texas. Oh, Texas. Okay. Um, I thought she was local. Maybe she's I not. Could be anyway, wrong. 
Conchita's in like the lighthouse family or whatever. Um, she's she's good people. Um, so yeah, that's that's that video. Um, I love just kind of her, kind of our discussion earlier about like her everybody's journey is a little bit different. I just really like this video kind of articulating a bit about what her journey was like and how it was really empowering to see blind people out and about and kind of challenging some of the stereotypes she has um, or had, I guess. Um, and yeah, she's done really awesome things since then. Uh, so if they'll let me go forward. Okay, so um, just a few like easy things you can do if you're interacting with blind people. This is like a uh, general if you see a blind person in the wild, but I'm sure it will also apply <laughs> to the Ashby Village community. Um, so just in general, uh, like any other human being, ask people before assuming they need help. Please don't grab people without their permission. There's like a huge, I don't know, um, involuntary reaction that people have of doing that. Just don't, please don't grab people without their permission in general. Um, ask people if they need help. Uh, they are a human being, they have the right to say no. Um, don't be offended if they say no. Uh, mm -hmm. And then if they say yes, say, great, how can I help you? Or, you know, great, you're looking for the CVS. It's across the corner. Can I walk you over there or whatever? Um, every situation is going to be different. Um, but yeah, I think the biggest thing for my like PSA is like if people are down in a BART station, they they found their way down there, it's going to be okay. Unless they're like on the yellow strips and a train is coming and they're leaning over, like it's probably going to be okay. I don't know what it is about BART, but everybody freaks out. Um, so yeah, just let me know if you need help. Um, if you're talking to a blind person and there's another sighted person with them, make an effort to talk to the blind person. This can be a little bit like culturally weird because the blind person maybe is not making eye contact with you or whatever. Um, but it's really infantilizing to have a conversation with somebody and then they're, you can, like, you can tell that they're constantly looking at somebody else. Um, so engage with them. One of my friends a, a while ago now, but went to the grocery store, she was with her eight-year-old kid. She was like handling the transaction and everything, got cash back, all of the thing. And then the clerk kept asking her like eight-year-old kid questions about the money and it's like well no this is like my you know this is the mom's question so just because she's blind doesn't mean she's less human um and then when meeting someone introduce yourself um if you're like kind of interacting with people one-on-one -on -one, maybe this doesn't come up as much but um like if i were to see sherry out in the street even though sherry and i know each other pretty well by this point i'm not going to just like start talking to her because she maybe doesn't know my voice out of context again blind people don't have like a superhuman ability to like know people's voices um so if i see sherry walking around berkeley i'll be like hey sherry it's allison and then we have a conversation um it sounds really awkward at first because it's just not part of cultural norms but trust me you get used to it it's wonderful also, it's wonderful it's also a great party trick i found if you like walk into a room and you don't know somebody's name you just be like hey it's allison they will most likely reintroduce themselves to you. And after we haven't seen everybody with COVID or they're wearing masks or whatever, I can never remember people's names anymore. Just do it. It's magic. It'll also make the person feel really welcome. And you don't want to have them asking every time, who is it? Who are you? I'm sorry. Who are you? Just, just make it simple. Hey, I'm Allison. Um, and then this translates onto Zoom um, by they can't see like, you know, the green box around the screen. Uh, so it's just like, hey, it's, or, you know, it's just Allison. And then you start talking or it's Allison and you talk. So then people know. Um, I love when people do that now, if there's like a room of this size, because my eyeballs can't pinball that fast. So this is one of those like universal design things where blind cultures got it right. Um, but anyway, just again, people don't have superhuman strength or superhuman memory. So just reintroduce yourselves. Um, I think that's it of the, yes. Um, here's Lighthouse's mission. Um, I am going to circle back to this slide. Um, so I have the title slide up again, um, with my email and Sherry's email. Um, I We'll also say that Jessica can probably share it out, just giving me a nod. Um, so you can reach out to us at any time if you have any questions, philosophical, really technical, 
somewhere in between, it doesn't matter. Uh, our plan was to also give a little bit of info about Lighthouse as well, so that if you're working for folks, you know who Lighthouse is and kind of what some of the resources are. Um, and since I was talking a lot, um, I usually don't talk to as much, um, well, I'll just send it out in a different kind of format. So then you have it as like a cheat sheet type thing. Um, but also Sherry's doing her, um, I'm so sorry. What are they called again, Sherry? It's Lighthouse Connection with Ashby yes. Village. It is the fourth Thursday for the next four months. Actually the last month um, we have not decided yet because it runs into Christmas time. So mm. um, to be determined, but um, check the Ashby Village newsletter and on how to sign up, you RSVP to me, and I will send you the Zoom link. 